Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another month. We gather together on the first Sunday of a new month in our respective homes to worship you, to praise you, to thank you, to adore you, and to place our prayers, petitions, supplications before you. O oh Lord, be with us during this service. Bless this service and all those who participate in this service and watch this service all over the world. We thank you for these, your children. We commit all of us in your hands, O oh Lord. Accept our praises and our thanksgiving. Be with us throughout this month, this day, and this week. Bless all our efforts and endeavors. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us all praise God by singing the hymn 245. Hail to the Lord's anointed. Hymn number 245.
let us pray. Almighty God, you know our thoughts and our desires, and no secret is hidden from you. By your Holy Spirit, prepare us now, so that we may love and worship you as we ought. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us say in unison, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Ten Commandments God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not kill. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal, Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness, Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. And you shall not covet, Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these your laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to hear God's most holy word. Let us therefore examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace, that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and peace with your neighbor and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, make your humble confession to Almighty God that you may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say in unison, Heavenly Father, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbor. We have walked in darkness rather than in light. We have named the name of Christ but have not departed from iniquity. Have mercy upon us, we ask you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, forgive us all our sins. Cleanse us by your Holy Spirit. Quicken our consciences and enable us to forgive others that we may henceforth serve you in newness of life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life the saying is sure and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners if anyone does sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous he is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only but also for the sins of the whole world almighty god a merciful savior who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters and with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to eternal life through jesus christ our lord amen thanks be to god the lord be with you let us pray the collect for the 14th sunday after pentecost o all knowing god who taught us wisdom is better than jewels and knowledge and understanding better than choice gold grant that we would have teachers who guide seekers into truth an understanding of the way with a heart of compassion and care so that they would be agents of liberation grounded in the word which is sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb through jesus christ who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forevermore amen now we shall have the first lesson The first lesson is taken from Proverbs chapter 8 verses 1 to 12. Proverbs chapter 8 beginning to read at verse 1. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town at the entrance of the portals she cries aloud. To you O men I call and my cry is to the children of man. O simple ones learn prudence O fools learn sense. Here, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. For my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to him who understands, and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I wisdom dwell with prudence and I find knowledge and discernment here ends the first lesson praise be to god now we shall listen to the second lesson the second lesson is taken from the acts of the apostles chapter 8 verses beginning from 26 to 38 acts chapter 8 beginning from verse 26 Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip rise and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza this is a desert place and he rose and went and there was an Ethiopian a eunuch a court official of Candace queen of the Ethiopians who was in charge of all her treasure he had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot and he was reading the prophet isaiah and the spirit said to philip go over and join this chariot so philip ran to him and heard him reading isaiah the prophet and asked do you understand what you're reading and he said how can i unless someone guides me and he invited philip to come up and sit with him Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb before its shearer is silent so he opens not his mouth in his humiliation justice was denied him who can describe his generation 
for his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Here ends the second reading. Praise be to you, O God. The gospel lesson is chosen from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6, verses from 34 to 44. St. Mark, chapter 6, verses from 34 to 44. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Here ends the gospel lesson. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Now let us all sing together the hymn 780, Master Speak, Thy Servant Heareth, hymn number 780.
Let us pray. the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yesterday, Teacher's Day was celebrated in our country. And today, we celebrate Teacher's Sunday in our church, in our diocese, and all over the Church of South India. I wish all teachers, school, college, university, and Sunday school of our two churches, Egmore Wesley Church, Broadway English Wesley Church, a happy Teacher's Sunday. Who is a teacher? That person can be someone who taught you in school, college, or university. But the biblical understanding of a teacher is deeper than that. A teacher is someone who not teaches you some knowledge, but one who teaches you how to live out that knowledge. In short, a teacher is someone who changes our life, molds our life, and transforms our life by words and actions. We have to be thankful to teachers who taught us in schools, because through their teaching, we have become useful people in the society and are able to earn a living if that is the case, we need all the more to be thankful to our Sunday school teachers or spiritual teachers because through them we receive not material benefits that last but for a while, but eternal and abundant life that is useful in this life and in our future life for eternity. Have you ever sincerely thanked your teachers or the teachers of your children? The church and I, as a pastor, want to take this opportunity to thank our teachers, our Sunday school teachers, our Parivalya teachers, The Lord knows, teachers, the Lord knows your labor of love. Students, remember your teachers. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. So teachers, press on. Teaching is a gift from God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. A teacher imparts knowledge. 
we draw inspiration from the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our moral teacher, an ideal teacher. Let us turn to St. John chapter 3, verse 2. There we find a well-educated person, Nicodemus. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, verse 2, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs what you do unless God is with him. Rabbi, Rabbi means teacher. We know that you are a teacher. Come from God. The plural, we, indicates that Nicodemus was speaking for a group of persons, probably fellow members of the prestigious Sanhedrin. This chapter, chapter 3, St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, gives us a portrait of Jesus as the divine teacher. Nicodemus was a respected man. Jesus explains salvation to him, and in the process, he explains it for us as well. Teachers are considered as nation builders. Teaching is the noblest profession, which is clearly associated with the molding of future generation of students and of society. The English word teacher originated from an Anglo-Saxon word, tecan, T-E-A-C-A-N, which meant to show or to point out. Teachers have become accustomed to pointing things out to students. When they teach, they use the pointer, either verbally with a pointer, cane, or scale in the olden days. The olden days, teachers were using a long cane, and now it is not possible. Use of a laser pointer a few years ago, or with a new pointer today, PowerPoint, in many classes, particularly in universities and colleges, PowerPoint is being used so that the students can understand the subject and can master the subject. The Gospels are replete with reference to Jesus as a teacher. Mark chapter 2, verse 13, Mark chapter 10, verse 1, Mark chapter 12, verse 35, Luke chapter 9, verse 47, so on and so forth. Jesus traveled all over Galilee and he preached there. He traveled all over Judea and he preached. People were astonished at his teaching. They were amazed. And he spoke with authority. He taught with authority. He taught with power. What are the methods of teaching? What are the methods Jesus adopted? And that will be an example, an inspiration for all teachers. Mark, Matthew chapter 4 verses 23 and 24. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. 
parables or Jesus's characteristic teaching technique. Teachers have to adopt the teaching technique of Jesus. Parables or Jesus's characteristic teaching technique. He also employed wisdom language, wisdom sayings, including puns, similes, metaphors, and proverbs. Jesus is the master teacher, a highly accomplished teacher, a used pedagogical trait to convey the mysteries of the kingdom of God. He taught with power, again Matthew chapter 4 verses 23 and 24. Then his teaching was unique, different from other scribes. St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 28. Look at the Sermon on the Mount. It has transformed the life of many people. It has brought freedom to many countries. The leaders who read Sermon on the Mount were transformed. And in turn, they transformed their own respective countries. Sermon on the Mount reflects upon the group dynamics. A huge crowd was there. The disciples were there, of course. There was no public address system those days. Jesus was able to reach the person, the last person, through his teaching. Jesus knew group dynamics. Teaching technique, here group dynamics. Every teacher has to adopt the method of Jesus. His style drew the attention of massive crowds. He also taught with compassion. His mi mission was one of compassion. He did not separate his compassion from his teaching. St. Matthew chapter 6, verse, St. Mark chapter 6, verse 34. He placed people first. We have to place our students first, our pupils first. And he challenged his followers. Every teacher has to challenge the students. As I said earlier, he taught with authority. Mark chapter 1 verse 22. Storytelling, repetition, and drawing people's attention. These are some of the methods of Jesus, methods of teaching of Jesus. Repetition, you know, that's what we do. During our school days, we were given impositions. Write 10 times, write this passage 10 times. Why do we do that? When we write 10 times, We learn that subject very well. We remember that subject. It goes into our head. The same thing with tables. We repeat. Five ones are five, five twos are ten, five threes are fifteen, five fours are twenty, so on and so forth. We repeat every day. Now we know how to count numbers. It comes naturally, spontaneously automatically because we're taught to repeat Jesus did that 2000 years ago Jesus taught people how to think and how to live a holistic education his education shaped the core values of his audience. 
to put it in a nutshell, we can say Jesus is the teacher par excellence. No one can match him. Teachers must take the students from knowledge to comprehension, followed by application and analysis. Book knowledge alone is not enough. Teachers should teach a total education. Children, students should receive complete education, total education. Then only it will make the students full human beings. They will know their value. They will discover their responsibilities in the society and in their families. William A. Ward had said, a mediocre teacher tells, a good teacher explains, a superior teacher demonstrates, a great teacher inspires. We have to inspire our students. And a true teacher can make a student hungry to learn. Learn more and more. We must help the students to master the subject. We should not teach them in a way that they can receive or if they secure 35%, it's okay. We must enable the students to master the subject. All of us in one way or other are teachers. We teach by the example we set for others to see and emulate. Yes, teachers qualify themselves, they undergo teachers training and become teachers. But in a way, we are all teachers. We have to teach others by the example we set so that people will see and emulate. And that is our responsibility. That is the responsibility of the church. And we have to liberate the society from all its bondages. We have to enlighten the people so that they can come to light from darkness. And that is the responsibility of all teachers and very especially all churches all over the world. May God bless all of us. May God bless our teachers especially so that they will liberate the society from all its bondages through their quality education so that our country and the world will fulfill its purpose. Amen. Let us profess our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us all and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Once again, I greet you all in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I greet the members of Egmont Wesley Church and Broad English Wesley Church who celebrate the birthdays and wedding anniversary this week. May God give them good health, strength and long life. abundant the grace of God. The online service is going on well and the online Sunday school is going on well. I thank you for all your prayers and support and participation. I am happy and grateful to you for responding to the appeal. I thank God for your generous and liberal contribution towards Pulikuntram Church. The church construction work is going on well and you can see for yourself on the screen. Continue to pray for this noble project and I thank you once again for your generous and liberal contribution. Many of you have been giving your contributions in tens and thousands and lakhs, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 1 lakh and 8 lakhs. One family has given 8 lakhs. And one family has come forward to sponsor the main door. And few other families have come forward to sponsor windows. And our Women's Fellowship, under the leadership of Pastor Rama, had already arranged for breakfast sale. And they are planning to meet the requirements of the altar. I thank you for your big heart. I thank God for your prayer, support and contribution.
continue to pay for doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and members who are not keeping well, and the members who recovered from COVID-19. Participate in all the activities of the church, pray for all the ministries of the church. Dear friends, the diocese has instructed all pastors to make announcement regarding payment of subscription. Those who could not pay subscription for the financial year from April 2019 to March 2020 are requested to update the subscription by paying the same on or before 20th of September 2020. You can send through net banking or you can pay in the church office. Church office is open from Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the gift of another month. We especially thank you for the members of both the churches who celebrate the birthdays and wedding anniversary this week. Bless each and every one of them. Fulfill all your plans and purposes in and through their life. Use them as a source of blessing to the church, to the society, to the family. We thank you, O Lord, for your children. You have contributed liberally and generously towards Pulikundram Village Church Construction Project. We thank you, O Lord, for inspiring them. We thank you for their prayer, support, and contribution. Help us to use this contribution for the construction of Pulikundra Village Church. And we thank you for members who have already promised to sponsor main door, windows, and other requirements. We thank you, O Lord, for their good intention. At this time, we very specially pray for the doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who work hard And we pray for the patients who need medical care and we pray that you may enable them to recover. And we very specially pray for the elders of our churches, the children of our churches who are below 15 years of age. Protect them under holy wings. Protect them from this deadly virus. We thank you, O Lord, for Mr. Isaac Rajendran and his daughter, Mrs. Elizabeth Jaisri Prince, who are back home and are convalescing. We pray that you may continue to put your healing touch upon them. We pray for Broadway English Wesley Church treasurer, Mr. Dr. Vincent's father, who is admitted to hospital. And we pray for his mother and son, Cyrus, who are at home, home quarantine. We pray that you may put a healing touch upon them. Bless them, O Lord, and give wisdom to the doctors to give right treatment to them. We pray for our church staff, Prabhu and his family, very specially. And we also pray for other staff, Mercy, Stephen, Deepa, Sam, and Lawrence. And Vijay Lakshmi. We will commit all of them in your hands, O Lord. Protect them under holy wings. 
and give them good health so that they can continue the work that is interested to them. We also pray for our country. We pray for those who lost their lives in the landslide in Iduki in Kerala. We pray for all those who are marooned in Andhra Pradesh due to Godavari floods and in Assam. Protect your children, our country from natural calamities. We pray for the leaders of our country as they take every step to protect free people from coronavirus and other calamities. that we face from time to time. We pray for world leaders. Let them strive hard to bring peace among themselves and peace in the world. Be with us, O Lord, throughout this month. Give us new direction and give us an opportunity to come together to worship you in the holy sanctuary. And we know that you will do that at the earliest. We thank you for our children as they join new classes and we pray that you may bless them as they learn, learn new lessons. Once again, O oh Lord, we thank you for this new day, new week and for this new month. Bless us and use us for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us say in unison, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, King of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us all sing together hymn 781. Lord, speak to me that I may speak. Hymn number 781.
Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for participating in the service. May God bless all of us. Thank you.